Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Bite Size History on History with Audrey D. In today's episode, we are going to be looking at the rise and fall of the Assyrian Empire as we continue our mini series on the civilizations that developed after ancient Sumer in ancient Mesopotamia. If you like Bite Size History so far, please make sure that you are hitting that like and subscribe button. Also, you can find me on Instagram and TikTok as History with Audrey D. And you can also support this channel on Patreon under History with Audrey D. Let's go ahead, get into our learning goal for today's lesson. standard for today is again standard two, which is to describe the emergence of early civilizations. Our learning goal for today is going to be to determine the impact of key figures from ancient Mesopotamian civilizations. Now, before we get into today's lesson, we are going to look over a few key terms that will help you better understand the content that we are reviewing today. Now, we will be reviewing the term military as it does apply to today's lesson, and we will be discussing the terms tribute, slingshot, and province. We discussed what military pertains to in our last lesson on Hammurabi and his code. However, here is a refresher. A military pertains to soldiers, weapons, and sometimes war. In today's lesson, we will be discussing the growth of militaries as we discuss the rise and fall of the Assyrian Empire. Our first definition is tribute. Now, a tribute is a payment method made to a ruler or state as a sign or signal of surrender. Next up is a province. Now, a province is a territory governed as a political district of a country or empire. And our last term for today is slingshot. Now, a slingshot is a weapon that is used to throw stones or other objects. Okay, now we know our key terms for today. Let's take a look at the Assyrian Empire. Roughly 1,000 years ago, after the reign of Hammurabi, the Assyrian Empire rose to power. This empire eventually spanned what is now present-day Turkey, Syria, Iran, and Iraq. At first, during what is known as the Old Assyrian Period, they were peaceful. Asher was the major city of Assyria, which first became free or independent roughly 4,000 years ago. Then, around 3,800 years ago, the city was taken over by Shamshi Adad who added it to his already growing empire that included modern day Iraq and Syria. While this empire was not long lasting, it did pave the way to what is known as the Middle Assyrian period. The successors of Shamshi Adad built up a large military which they used to defend their territories and eventually to take control of more portions of Mesopotamia around 900 BCE. Their army was well-trained and included infantry, charioteers, and horse soldiers. They used weapons such as bows and arrows, swords, spears, and slingshots. Next up, let's take a look at what life was like in the Kingdom of Assyria. Looking at life in the Assyrian Empire, we find that the empire was divided into different provinces with each province having a governing official that was appointed by the king. These officials would collect taxes and carry out laws as well as govern the province. Assyrians learned how to govern and live from their Mesopotamian predecessors. They had codes of laws with harsh punishments and worshipped the same gods as the Babylonians. One of the first libraries in the world was built by the Assyrian king Ashurbanipal in Nineveh. This library is believed to have held 25,000 stone tablets that contained stories and songs to the gods. 
In Assyria, farming and trade were both important. They imported wood and metal to supply their empire with materials for buildings, as well as making tools and weapons. Their art and architecture was also very similar to traditional Sumerian art of ancient Mesopotamia, and they also adopted the written language of the Babylonians. The Assyrians destroyed the lands they conquered and then also demanded tributes from those they conquered as well. Assyrians had iron weapons, which they learned how to make from the Hittites. This is part of what made the Assyrians so brutal. There were many Assyrian kings, including those of the Neo-Syrian Empire, which began around the 9th century BCE and lasted until the destruction of the Assyrian Empire, which occurred just before 600 BCE. This is the time frame in which Assyria grew to its largest size. The ruler Ashurnasirpal II reigned from 883 to 859 BCE and regained a great deal of the territory that they controlled. It helped the empire to span once again to the Mediterranean coast. Assyrian kings had to be strong leaders in order to rule over the large expanse of the empire. In total, Assyria went from the Persian Gulf in the east to the Nile River in the west. During the reign of Sargon II, which was from 721 to 705 BCE, he moved the capital of Assyria to a newly founded city called Khorsabad. Then, during the reign of Sennacherib, which lasted from 704 to 681 BCE, Sennacherib built a new palace at Nineveh and moved the capital of Assyria there. As Assyrian power grew, they gained more lands, including the southern kingdom of Judah. Assyrian lands encompassed what is now modern-day Lebanon, and under the leadership of Sargon II, they attacked Israel and Palestine, completely destroying Israel. Toward the end of the Assyrian Empire, the ruler, Esarhaddon, conquered Pharaoh Taharqa in 671 BCE and captured Memphis, the Egyptian capital. The Assyrians then appointed a number of vassal rulers to try to govern Egypt. In the end, it was a combination of internal rebellions in Babylonia, attacks from external groups including the Medes, which were based in what is now Iran, and having the majority of their troops expanding the western portions of the kingdom that began the decline of the Assyrian Empire. The Babylonians became independent during the reign of King Nabopolassar, which lasted from 625 to 605 BCE. In 612 BCE, a major attack was launched on Nineveh by the Medeans. The Assyrians fought and lost the city after several months. By 600 BCE, the kingdom of Assyria was completely destroyed, with the last king most likely being Sinsaris Kun. That is it for today's lesson on the rise and fall of the Assyrian Empire. I hope you better understand how the Assyrian Empire grew and eventually collapsed, and you have a little bit more understanding on those kingdoms of ancient Mesopotamia. If you like this episode, please make sure that you like and subscribe to History with Audrey D. If you have any questions, please make sure you drop those in the comment section below. I'd be happy to answer them as soon as I get the chance. And if you like watching these episodes, please make sure that you find me on Patreon as History with Audrey D to support this channel. And you can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok as History with Audrey D as well. Thank you for watching, everyone. I will see you in our next lesson.